Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out something a little bit goofy and irreverent called Bubsy 3D. Bubsy visits the James Terrell retrospective and I'm just going to go ahead and read this little blurb off the site here that I'm playing it from. Uh, this is a web-based edutainment experience produced by Arcane Kids who you might remember did a game called Zenith that I did a video a while back on. Excellent game, great developer, and uh, this is going to be really funny. Explore your relationship with art as you guide Bubsy through a realistic recreation of the James Trell retrospective at the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. After you've played Bubsy 3D and understand art a little better, Arcane Kids encourages you to go visit an art museum in your area and quit video games. That's kind of a funny way to start the game, I have to be honest. So apparently this is the 18th birthday of Bubsy. I don't know if this is actually true information, but that's what it says on the site anyway. Uh, it seems like that could be true. I'm remembering Bubsy was uh, a game back in the SNES era that then got adapted to a 3D, kind of a, a little bit of a forced platformer on the PS1, was somewhat regarded as one of, I think, the worst platformers running, uh, but that didn't stop it. Anyway, we've got this derpy version of uh, Bubsy here, and let's turn it out and see what it looks like. So, uh, we've got the Fur Awakening of Chapter 1. Uh, we're gonna control our character with the arrow keys here, and it looks like we're gonna be collecting some of these glowing, kinda rainbow spherical orbs. And let's talk to a frog, what do you have to say? Hey, Bubsy, good morning. Jump with space, burbit. Okay, well, we can do that. Uh, so one thing that I do remember Bubsy was famous for was his ability to glide, because, of course, cats all glide, I guess, right? Oh, hello, there's, like, another... Bubsy friend up there on top of those trees. I guess I need to figure out how to get to... Oh, I can just walk up the side of the landscape. That's interesting. So uh, we have an art style that I believe is sort of aping a similar style as what the old Bubsy 3D had. Only, I have to say, if I remember correctly, uh, this looks a lot better than the original game did, and probably... Uh, just because it would be very difficult to make something that low fidelity at this point. Uh, I also remember, I think it, it controlled very, very poorly, which, you know, in the era of uh, the very beginning of three-dimensional games, I guess that's kind of reasonable. Um, I have to wonder, now that I, I just noticed that this guy is standing here, are you another player? Because this is actually online on the web player right now, so I'm wondering, maybe they sync this data up. I'm actually thinking that actually might be the case of what's going on here. So maybe we've got other actual players walking around in Bubsy land with us. Kind of interesting. Something I didn't expect to happen either. Bubsy, you should check out the art museum over there. I heard it's a blast for learning. All right, Mr. Frog. Well, uh, I am all into learning, being that I am a hovering cat. I'm um, not really sure why frogs are the thing that's going on here. I'm not sure if frogs had anything to do with the old Bubsy game. Uh, or really how faithful at all this game has to be to the old Bubsy game, because obviously I think you probably want to avoid being too close to it, considering, I don't know if that's still, like, an issue uh, copyright-wise. I don't know, does anyone care about the copyright to Bubsy? Maybe they don't. It's entirely possible that that is the case. Uh, the art style on those trees actually reminded me a little bit of, like, Rocco's Modern Life, which is kind of making me laugh. Uh, you can glide by holding down jump. You'll need this technique to get to the museum. Oh, oh, I glided a little bit too early there, and I missed what you said at the bottom. You need this technique to get to the museum and to get all the collectibles. Okay. Well, so far I think we're doing fairly okay, except I missed that very obvious collectible right there. I'll see if I can make my way back over. It seems that the, uh, Mr. Cat here has no trouble climbing up sheer cliff faces, I guess due to his, uh, incredible dexterity and nimble paws or something like that. I mean, he is a cat, so, right, he can, like... He can use his uh, scratch cat abilities and climb up walls. I love how his eyes aren't quite in sync with his head, uh, and they seem to actually... Oh, come on now, there we go. They seem to just kind of, like, hang out a little bit in their own world. I'll see if I can show you what... Yeah, see, like, as his head rocks back and forth, the eyes don't necessarily move <laughs> along with them, and then they kind of blink on their own time, which is hilarious. Anyway, let's keep going. I want to see this, uh, this James Terrell retrospective... Uh, an artist that I don't know much of anything about, to be honest with you. I mean, someone that I don't remember ever really covering uh, in school. But I think he was an artist from the 80s, if I remember correctly. Something about light and space. I don't know, I think that's probably a fairly safe thing to say about just about any artist, to be honest with you. But uh, what do I know? I guess I don't really need that heart. Uh, zero out of a thousand of something. That scares me a little bit. Um, I will try to make my way over here and continue getting collectibles. That was almost a death. Uh, I don't know, maybe those hearts are like 1-ups or something. 
So they are not exactly the easiest thing to get to, and this shape is definitely not very intuitive. Oh my goodness, the camera. Uh, see, this is one of those great instances where if the game wigs out for one reason or another, you can just say that you were going to, uh, you were trying to model after the original game, who uh, I'm guessing probably didn't even have hardly any camera controls, because, you know, PS1 uh, originally didn't even have analog sticks. If uh, anyone remembers back that far, I wouldn't blame you if you didn't. But, uh, that was the case, and I'm thinking back to, like, what was it about the original Bubsy that made the character, like, anything in particular? I think what it was going after was trying to be, like, an SNES Sonic the Hedgehog-style game, so they gave the cat unnecessary amounts of attitude, because, as you all know, Sonic was known for his attitude and, of course, his love of chili dogs and going fast. Uh, Bubsy couldn't quite go so fast, and he wasn't, like, Sparkster or anything. Yeah, he could hover, but he couldn't exactly, like, turbo fly or anything. He was just sort of, you know, didn't really have much going for him other than his attitude. So, uh, when you get rid of his attitude, well, I guess this is what you have left. Uh, a very difficult platformer that I can't seem to quite make this simple jump here because I have no camera controls. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I guess maybe I might need a seizure warning, and in fact, if you do decide to go ahead and play this, which you can for totally, uh, for free, there's a site dedicated to only hosting this game on it. Oh god, well, now I've done it. Uh, you should definitely go in with the foreknowledge that the background of this site is extremely abrasive to the eyes. R.I.P. Rip in peace, Bugsy. Alright, well, we're back. We've got an exclamation point here that's gonna help us through. Uh, I guess I will stop being... Uh, so worked up about trying to get all of the collectibles. I guess it's not really gonna happen. Look, it's the Los Angeles County Museum of Art! 5, uh, 5905 something something something. Didn't get to read it in time. Alright, well, we'll keep going this direction. Pretty strange presentation here. These look like, uh, light posts or something, only uh, a little bit more artistic and all solid and red plastic. I'm just a little kid, but I still understand and appreciate all that art has to offer. So there is a definitely a sarcastic narrative running through this, and I enjoy it quite a lot, actually. Here, have a ticket. Special exhibit, James Terrell, a retrospective. So great exhibit. Are we doing a Doge reference here as well, maybe? Such exhibit. Much wow. Oh wow, I wasn't actually hovering there, I was just sort of flying through the air uh, on my feet somehow, which is not a thing that he's supposed to be able to do. Oh, I, I stopped falling in my gliding. That was very strange. Well, I need, like, two more of these orbs to have this number say 20. I'm gonna guess maybe, though, that that is all of the orbs? No, wait, there's two right there. And I see a third one, so I guess that's not true. Maybe I just need this many to go to the next level. Uh, and if that is the case, that's actually kind of a fun way to do things. Uh, I do definitely enjoy 3D platformers, and I've actually gone on record as saying uh, I, I think there should be more of them. Oh, I've gotten 21 out of 20 now, that's good. Uh, this is definitely a, a satirical take on a 3D platform, so we're not really going to be holding this to the same uh, journalistic standard that I often try to. Not, I mean, I usually go into these to try to be pretty positive for the most part, and if I find uh, that a game is largely completely negative, uh, I will usually omit that video and it will never see the light of day. So if you've ever wondered how I achieve that effect of having so many positive videos, uh, it's because I have a folder full of ones that didn't quite make the cut. Uh, I like to keep a, a rather positive atmosphere around games uh, on my channel, and I think that that is you know, easily enough attainable. There's a lot of really good stuff out there, you just gotta know roughly where to look and have the right frame of mind when you start out. What are the, the icons doing at the bottom of the screen? They're just sort of rolling and bouncing around in bizarre ways. Uh, this is it, the Terrell, James Terrell exhibit. I just have to walk inside. Alright. Night at the museum. Oh, I get it. It's like the movie and also, like, cats. Uh, what does this guy have to say about himself? Look at his face. He's so happy. Hello, Bubsy. Please delete me. I'm just a tech demo. Oh. Alright, so this is the, uh, the James Terrell retrospective. Uh, May 26, 2013 to April 6, 2014, so that's, uh, the time that it will be showing. I can't believe I never went to the museum before. Yeah, I can't believe it either, either Bubsy. What are you doing, man? Who is this reminding me of that, I mean, obviously this is supposed to be in the, uh, the work of James Terrell, but it, this is also reminding me of someone else. Is it John Cage or something? I've seen a bunch of artists that do things similar to this. People seem to really be enjoying installation art. 
Oh, they're clapping. I have never seen anyone clapping for installation art in my life, to be honest with you. I've been to a few museums, uh, definitely seen a few exhibits, but I've never quite seen this level of exuberance. These people are all giddy. The presentation style of these people is reminding me a little bit of Hard Time, uh, which you may be familiar with the uh, prison simulation game that I covered on the show, uh, show a long time ago. Uh, Juke Green, 1968 Cross Corner Projection. Okay. <laughs> so we've got three people. I, I don't know what's part of the exhibit and what's part of the game here. Uh, these light works are reminiscent of primitive 3D computer graphics. Oh my, this is the greatest thing. <laughs> I'm enjoying the crap out of this. There aren't very many games that actually tackle concepts such as satirical art criticism, and uh, this is something that I love. Uh, art's cool. <laughs> oh my god, look at this guy. Oh, he's very tall. He's actually he's got his head right through the ceiling there. I don't remember this one. 19... <laughs> cross corner destruction. <laughs> so I guess now we've just broken the fourth wall here. Light defines form, but light also has a form of its own. Light has thingness. And truthiness, if you really want to get into things. Is thingness actually a thing that's been said in a semi-serious art uh, discussion? It probably is, right? Uh, I've, you know, been in quite a few classes having gone to art school, and we've definitely done quite a few art critiques. And, uh, wow, all of a sudden, Firefox just decided to block this program. All right, whatever. Uh, as long as it doesn't affect anything. Here we go. Not sure if I should be in here. Oh, man, I've had that moment. Uh, I was at the, I think it was the Dia Gallery, and there was an area uh, that was, it looked like it was partially roped off a little bit, but then there were also a bunch of huge boxes, and it actually was sort of just like this, only they didn't look like they were shipping crates, they just looked like boxes that stuff would be moved around in, like, in the gallery, and I had no idea if that was an area that was actually an art exhibit, or if it was just a storage area that I wasn't supposed to be walking around in, like, this is exactly correct to this statement and uh, there was even you know a little guide to the the gallery and it didn't make mention of that area and to this day I don't know if I was somewhere I was not supposed to be forgot there's so much art outside right outside your house to learn from so I'm gonna go on record as saying this is one of the the more hilarious things that I've ever found for the channel and I wish there were more things that took oh my god do you see his eyes his eyes were completely outside of his body when I was gliding towards the screen oh he's stopped flying now he's just gonna walk I, I love how janky the animations are. It actually makes it even better. Um, so far, this is, like, completely gold to me. This is a thing that is very near and dear to my heart. Uh, the fact that we can actually sort of laugh at art as we also laugh at silly game design and put it all together in a big pile like this. Uh, key lime wedge work. Okay. Let's see what's in here. In this piece, it's like as if light is a form of architecture. Damn, it's shaping our understanding of space. Alright. That one actually, I would find this to be at least a little bit cool if I found this in an actual gallery. Uh, although, I guess if you look at it in another way, it's really just uh, kind of uh, an empty room, right? There was one also that I almost tripped over. It was just a bunch of guide wires just run along the floor. Uh, with little fasteners clipped to different places on the floor, and it, it wasn't really making any shapes in particular. It was sort of like, maybe sort of implied geometry, but it wasn't really anything that you could really suss out. And uh, I pretty much almost ran over the thing, and I'm, I'm almost positive if my foot would have hit it, I would have bent it. <laughs> so, that was a little bit weird, and not a thing that I'm very used to seeing in galleries. I, I, I did not have a good experience that day, and I am, I'm no uh, stranger to conceptual art, and I actually, I kind of like a lot of it, but sometimes you go off the deep end a little bit, and uh, I think that's what we're poking fun of here. I heard the final piece, St. Elmo's Breath, is unreal, a spiritual experience. Alright, well that would be this. I continue to gain, we're now up to 65 out of 20 of these collectible pieces. Uh, space Division Construction. So it's just a, a big pink box on the wall. It's beautiful. The The spinning ball is actually going crazy now. Oh, there's snakes too. Uh, wait a second, it's not a projection. It's a whole other room, an infinite void. This is great. This is so great. Oh my goodness, there's a casket in here. 
what do I do about this? Do I go in it? Well, that would make it performance art if I actually can go in it. Oh, that's what happens. And I lay down in the casket. And I am transported to Gravelord Nito's realm, I hope. What happens now? Oh my goodness. Chapter 3, bu Bub Sled Ride. And now, oh my goodness, it's a whole new style of gameplay. I thought that was going to be the end of the game, but now we've got a Mario 64 style sliding level. Oh my goodness, it, uh, I'm so excited about this. I don't even know what to tell you. The, uh, the graphics actually look substantially better here. I think there might actually be bump mapping on some of these walls, which is uh, a thing that I was not expecting to run into in this production. This developer definitely is quite outstanding at what they do, and uh, this is an experience unlike pretty much anything I've ever seen before. Uh, going down this now, we've got what appears to be some sort of spinning wheel that I need to not hit into. Or maybe I do need to hit into it? I don't know. We're going to find out where this puts me. Oh, okay, it's actually just a big cylinder uh, with a... Oh, that doesn't seem right. Chapter 4, Cat Out of Hell. Now we're taking the Earthworm Gym approach. This game is surprisingly immersive and has more to it than I would have expected. Oh my gosh, I'm not... I'm not Bubsy anymore. What a wild ride, I'm finally an adult. Alright, and now there is a sort of copyrighted music playing in the background, so I'm going to talk uh, non-stop as we wrap up this episode of Bubsy uh, 3D. Bubsy visits the James Terrell Rep Retrospective. Uh, web-based edutainment experience. I think you guys should definitely go check this out. It's a pretty wild ride, and I'm pretty glad that I played it. Uh, link's gonna be in the description. Make sure you go check it out. Dance with the skeletons. Have a good time, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do check out the links aside from just the download link for the game itself. Uh, there are also all of my social media links, uh, my Twitter, my Facebook, my Twitch page, and of course indie-impressions.com where you can go to find uh, over, well, almost 600 other episodes in the series all categorized and sorted for you. I think the music is actually looping, so I think we're fine. I was expecting it to actually, you know, break into the full song because, you know, who cares anymore, right? Uh, but that's not what's going on. So, I will leave you with this. This is a wild game. Go check it out. I don't think you're going to find much else out there like it. So that is going to be it. Please do continue to leave your support. I will see you next time. New episodes are every single day. Hope you have a lovely night, and I will talk to you tomorrow.